Okay, let's talk COSM. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by. Once again, this is Arca coming at you with a COSM technicals, raw price action, and statistical threat of analysis on this Thursday. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community in Discord called Arca Bulls. With that said, let's dive right into the charts. Okay, you guys, so we're looking at COSM in the immediate short-term time frame, which is usually something that I don't do. And I'm, I want to start here because I want to explain to you what I'm liking and what I'm not liking. Liking, right, so I'm gonna give you both of the scenarios here, and so that you can go ahead and make up your own mind, right? So, <clears throat> uh, some let's start off with some good news here, okay? So, you, this is my master layout, right, where I have my volatility momentum. I have another a trend momentum based indicator called the MACD. I have a, a trend validator or a trend signal generator, right? So this actually would tell me where trend is kind of favoring, right? So this is the ADX with uh, DMI, and this is the stochastic momentum versus uh, stochastic momentum versus money flow index, right? So in the immediate short term time frame, it looks like we're getting that upside pivot on stochastics, right? We have critical volatility here and in the contraction zone. So uh, volatility is direction neutral. Okay. So whenever we are down here, that usually means that there is a, uh, there, there's really not much volume happening, right? So when it's critically low like this, we have literally no volatility. Okay. So usually when we are uh, within this critical zone, there is, I mean, mathematically speaking, it is programmed to uh, kind of revert, right? And start expanding thus in, uh, thus, uh, uh, giving off more more uh, volatility, right? So more volume traded, more shares traded. Okay, so what I like to look for here is starting from the immediate short-term time frame, I like to see either critical zones, right? Within the 90 percentile of the expansion zone and within the 15 or 10 percentile of the contraction zone paired with an upside on, on momentum, right? So we are getting that upside on momentum. I'm sorry, and this is my RSI. This is relative strength index, right? It's just uh, similar to the MACD is just, you know, uh, so many, so many uh, occurrences here of momentum, right? So, uh, we're getting this upside pivot on the thirty minute. Let's go, let's go down the line, okay? So the hourly time frame is also now starting to show that upside pivot too, and in the hourly time frame, it's showing that we're actually getting. Uh, a, a more just a lot more volume tra uh, traded right so this is a good sign that means that the 30 minute is toppling over into the hourly and the hourly will likely topple over into the buy hourly you can see that the buy hourly is showing a little bit of sign of life here from that leading indicator three uh this is the three period exponential moving average right so and actually it's starting to contract from a critical volatility zone right so this is usually a pretty good sign OK, what, what I like is, is that, yes, we have the immediate short term time frames with an upside pivot and it looks like it's starting to affect the buy hourly. Right. So what we want here is to start generating enough waves from the immediate short term time frame. So if we get an impulsive move to the upside here, that will likely bleed into the hourly time frame with a bigger upside pivot on that stochastic, which would then topple into the buy hourly for an upside pivot and so on. Right. So that's kind of what we're looking at so far so now when i particularly look for plays to uh let's just say for, for plays to kind of trade right i would like to see the the that domino effect that cascading effect i would like to see that all the way up to the four hour minimum okay so as soon as i do have that four hour with an upside pivot alongside the bi hourly hour 30 minute then that could be a pretty good opportunity for a continuation to the upside okay so as long as we are maintaining within the buy hourly and 30 minute of uh you know a potential upside or downside here there is the chance that we can actually trade sideways right but but we have to look at every other metric uh included here right so let's go ahead and move on to the next chart and start talking about what i do like right so uh another thing that i am liking is for sure we talked about this before this is the five day volatility versus momentum back test and this was already showing an upside bias the stochastic momentum 
from three period exponential and the 14 period simple this is actually showing a pretty nice upside of which mathematically speaking statistically speaking has seen an average upside thrust of about 162 percent over the span of about 116 days with a 100 percent hit rate right so this strike rate of 100 percent is due to six out of six iterations historically speaking on the five-day chart throughout the entire trading history of the cosm asset right so at some point this is going to be invalidated at some point it's not going to maintain a 100 percent read it's really just because we have not many uh iterations uh you know of this particular criteria anytime that volatility starts contracting and momentum starts an upside pivot that pair actually has you know that pair i've measured that upside thrust the duration of the iteration and however many times the iterations uh or the signature between uh, volatility and momentum have guessed the upside correctly versus incorrectly in this case six out of six times is pretty uh uh, pretty dead on, right? So, and another metric here to kind of keep in mind is, is that we do have kind of a balance of bull control here and absolutely market trending at 35%, which is pretty outstanding and also very curious that the price action isn't actually continuing onto the upside based on these uh, metrics alone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, it's, it's ready, right? This is literally ready to pop off and I'm not exactly sure when, but let's go ahead and continue our analysis to see what else we have in line. Okay, so uh, yeah, th this is the daily time frame uh, falling wedge that we actually take uh, took a look at, right? So eventually, the these falling wedges tend to meet their upside price objective, which could be located at uh, about four dollars and fifty six cents, taken uh, taken by this uh, method here, right? So from the top of the trend line all the way to the bottom trend line, and then you apply it to that area of breakout, which is right about here, right? And then that would take us to about four dollars and fifty six cents. So we've already met the center, uh, the, the center target, right? So that would be right about here. That's one set of bulls, and then the other set of bulls is actually from down here, right? So those two targets have already been met, and the next ones are the next one would be this one here, right? Upon upon a pretty nice upside. What I can tell you is, is that bulls do not like to see this print on a daily read, okay? This right here is called uh, a bearish engulfing candle structure, right? So when the forward candle is engulfing in red, the previous green candle. Uh, pardon me. So that's usually kind of a bearish signal, and it would lead to a downside, right? So as you can see here, this is another iteration of a bearish engulfing candle, and uh, the price action led to the downside. So what's curious about that formation is that there isn't any uh, price objective to it. It just signals a potential psychological uh, something, right? So here, in this case, you can actually see a bullish engulfing, right? So this is the green candle engulfing the previous red candle, and that led to a pretty nice upside, right? So and here's a bearish engulfing right here these two candles here and then the price led to the downside right so it is uh, cosm is following its candle analysis particularly in the in the higher term time frames pretty nicely right so let's move on to the next chart and see what we have so here is another thing that i do uh, i'm sorry th this is obviously what i don't like right so <laughs> um now something that i am liking but it's also kind of teeth grinding here is is that we are just teetering around uh, around the break of this uh, volatility zone, right? The the contraction zone. It's like we're we're just teasing it, and we're not actually breaking officially upside and continuing on that uh, volatility expansion, right? So something is something feels like it's holding it back here. And the reason why I'm saying that I I really would like for something to kind of uh, happen here is because this is set up. This is literally ready for a very explosive move to the up. Side. So upon this criteria, okay, upon the following criteria, we can make, we can uh, potentially make a one hundred a two hundred and six percent move to the upside uh, with a standard deviation of three hundred and eighty two spot eighty seven percent with an upper bound of the first standard deviation of a massive five hundred and eighty nine spot seventy six percent. Okay, so upon this criteria right we need both of the volatility component which is the spec the spectrum line right and the moving average we need them both pivoted to the upside 
and at least beyond the 10 percentile. But ideally, it would be it would be best if we can get it above the 15 percentile with an upside pivot, increasing volatility paired with stochastic momentum with an upside pivot, too. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because there is to be a corrective move here. Uh, starting on that three-day exponential moving average, right? So this is nice. This is good. We can get that correction and make that move to the upside as soon as we have both of these p- uh, pivoted towards the upside and these uh, both of these, uh, th- the average and the spectrum line also pivoted towards the upside. This, uh, mathematically speaking, can make a very exponential move to the upside and that uh, could actually lead to several, several very nice targets. In fact, let me just put it to you this way: the two hundred and six, uh, the two hundred and six uh, percent uh, target, right, would lead to around a nine dollars and seventy four cents, right? So already curious because there's already so much resistance at that level, right? But and I'm not going to draw it right now, but just real quick: five hundred and eighty nine uh, spot seventy six percent, which is the upper bound of the first standard deviation, would take you to actually twenty. You know what? We, let's just. Uh, pretend that we're uh, let's just pretend that the signal was fired now right and let's just go ahead and put it in there so let's do something like this and zoom out just a little bit you will be surprised as to where this thing takes you so 589 percent to the upside so remember that these are statistics they are not certainties please take a look at that target right over here let's highlight it 2390 what is that all-time high right now 2384 i'm not sorry the 52 week high right so uh, or even that that was actually at the at the RS the split the one to the one to 25 RS uh, in December 15th situation that happened it would literally take us to within sense of that location there which is very curious right I'm not saying that we're gonna go there immediately I am just saying that mathematically speaking there is a chance to be able to do this and the time of duration upon the firing of the signal that criteria that we spoke about would be about 37. Uh, 37 days and eight hours, right? So the, we we want to get that thing validated. We want to get that spectrum line and moving average above uh, the 15 percentile, at least the 10 percentile upside pivot on that stochastic momentum, and we officially have fired that signal for a potential upside. Remember that you're looking at a first standard deviation here, okay? So meaning that that would be the absolute highest probability with a 66 spot 66 percent chance that it could move to that upside, but not to meet this. Of course, of course, it can meet it. Right. But it's giving us a range, a bound for us to look at the potential resistances within this range as well. OK, so that's usually how we should treat our statistics. Right. So now let's go ahead and uh, go over the last part of the analysis here. And this is going to be the RSI. So let's start off with the 30 minute immediate short term time frame. And please notice that we have a pretty significant upside for the immediate short term. And as we start jumping in into the buy hourly, I have to say that there is a little bit of resistance here. But what I am liking is, is that the 14 day simple moving average represented by that pink line is actually making an upside move based on the influence from the RSI signal. So there could be a chance that this can actually succeed the upside of that 14-day simple moving average fairly soon. Okay, now the four-hour time frame does have a, does have a similar situation here as well, right? 14-day simple moving average resistance right up there. And it, I mean, it looks like we're kind of getting that curvature too, right? So there is a chance that we can succeed that as well. Now, the reason why I'm saying that there is a chance to succeed that is because almost every time frame is suggesting an upside pivot on that 14 day simple pink line right so notice here on the eight hour we still have an upside pivot and upside pivot on the rsi signal notice right over here on the 12 hour that we have an upside pivot on that rsi upside pivot on the i'm sorry the 14 day simple and on the rsi signal right and now if we are able to look at a potential downside then there could be a floor found soon. And I'm talking about with the relative to within the next day or two, right? So this is the daily RSI, and it looks like it's finding that support from the 14-day simple, but not only that. When I look at an RSI, the bottom half of the RSI is the bearish control zone. The upper half of the RSI is the bullish control zone. The inner workings of the RSI can be considered the weakness percentile. So bullet, this is the bull weakness. 
weakness, and this is the bear weakness. And of course, the outsides would be the strength percentile, right? So bull strength and bear strength. In this case, every single bound, every single uh, border that there is between every zone is a gravitational zone, 2% up and 2% down from each zone, right? So that gravitational zone tends to pull you towards the opposing side or the, or, or the forward side, right? So in this case, you can see that the RSI signal is right at the border of 50%, but the 14-day simple is located within that 2% bound of the gravitational zone from the bear weakness percentile, which means that the RSI signal, the RSI signal, the purple line, has a good chance of finding support from that 14-day simple and from the gravitational zone together. Two areas of support before a continuation onto the upside. And the reason why I can say that is because the daily time frame does not see the close of the, uh, the, the daily time frame doesn't see the close of the after hours activity. Okay, so daily is actually finding that upside already because it closed at 346. Right. So the price action went up after hours. So very, very curious that we are talking about literally what is I mean, tomorrow we're probably going to see exactly what, what I said right now. Right. So and now jumping in into the uh, last last time frames, right, the uh, three day and the five day are just within this terrible, terrible gravitational pull here, right? We're literally getting stuck within that gravitational zone. Uh, I like that. I like the fact that the three-day time frame is showing an upside bias on that 14-day simple, and the RSI signal could be finding that bottom side too as a support. That's nice. So all of this is indicating that we are just kind of waiting for the shorter time frames to essentially influence the upper time. The upper time frames. Talking about that cascading effect, right from that first chart that we were looking at okay you guys please remember first and foremost that i am not a financial advisor take whatever i do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as i cannot suggest for you to buy sell hold or uh anything like that any asset whatsoever okay you guys do your own due diligence and everything will be cool cool and uh yeah so as far as a uh, very uh, as, as far as the resistance by hourly time frame it could actually show us that the 351 area could be a nice area of resistance and let's go to the eight hour and 12 hour to see if we have anything there right so yeah very short term resistance at that at that uh area of about 348 to about 351 and if if we are able to uh yeah it would be the bottom side of this candle right over here right so that could be a very likely resistance before coming back and testing the 346 of the pre-market high right or the pre-market close and then we can actually continue on to that upside okay you guys so there there is a there is a very nice potential here you guys but remember that COSM has impulsive moves and it does have some pretty uh it has its moments right so <laughs> let's just go ahead and remember that it does have that and anything that i said here could be immediately invalidated with a psychological event whether it's sold off or bought okay you guys but with that said i wish you well a very very good night and i will catch you at the bell manana adios